Clean water is perhaps the most precious resource we have on our planet. However, around the world there remain severe risks from exposure to water, which is contaminated with pollutants, poisons and infectious diseases. Whilst it is not always possible to prevent water from becoming contaminated in the first place, especially if there is a natural source, it is entirely plausible to provide an affordable mass rollout of basic surveillance and early warning of unsafe water supplies, enabling authorities to take mitigating action. Here in the Ocean Technology and Engineering team at the National Oceanography Centre, we are working towards the use of state-of-the-art methods and technologies to do just this. Our recent work took us to the county of Cornwall, which prides itself on clean beaches, pristine waters and excellent seafood. However, from time to time, the region is impacted by a natural phenomenon known as a harmful algal bloom. This happens when microscopic plants, known as phytoplankton, begin to grow and multiply, and when they reach high cell numbers, they begin to compete with other marine life for nutrients and sunlight, and some species produce highly potent toxins. These toxins are really important because they collect in food webs and may ultimately be consumed by humans. They're not destroyed by cooking, and in some instances, exposure can even be fatal, albeit this is rare. Because of the risks involved, the local authorities are tasked with sampling the water to test for known toxic species. Then, if these are detected beyond a threshold level, known as a trigger level, samples of seafood must be regularly collected and tested for the toxins. The problem is that the phytoplankton cells must be preserved and transported to a laboratory for testing, then viewed under a microscope in what amounts to a long and protracted and expensive process. So what can we do to help? Well, to try and help, we are developing new rapid methods that can identify and enumerate the phytoplankton cells within minutes, and combining these methods with technologies that mean they can be used right on site without the need for a lab or scientist. This approach can be more accurate, significantly faster and potentially far cheaper. Our methods use genetic analysis, meaning that we are measuring genome sequences that match only to the species we are interested in. When we compared our genetic testing to the current statutory methods for samples from Cornish waters, we were able to show that not only did genetic testing provide similar results, including successfully monitoring an algal bloom that occurred in late 2021, that an improved sensitivity enabled us to detect another bloom in early 2022, about four weeks ahead of the conventional lab analysis. So the potential for these methods is hugely exciting because genetic analysis can also be directed towards other forms of water contamination, including in the detection of waterborne illnesses, and the work continues.